you'd want the roof done before finishing up the windows and the doors. But once the paper's on the ceiling board, you can start cutting out your openings while the roof's being worked on. And we've already marked a window opening here on the dining room wall. We'll cut it out with a chainsaw. We put in some plywood shims here in between the logs. This way the logs won't sag once we cut out our opening. Now, when the home was manufactured, they put metal rebar on both sides of the window. This helps support the walls. But because we have such a nice lake view here, we took our double window and expanded that to a triple window, which moved this side of the window out past this rebar. So if we cut out the logs, we'll remove this, which isn't really a problem because we'll put bucks along the windows nailed into the logs. Those will help support this wall here. After cutting the logs down one side of the opening, I cut the top log near the rebar. And I've got Dean Doyne to help me here by holding the log as I finish the cut. Then we pull the log out and lay it aside. That's how we remove the larger sections of logs up to the rebar. We cut the rebar with a reciprocating saw. Then we can remove the shorter sections by cutting along the other side of the opening. For the horizontal top and bottom cuts, I run the blade sideways along the marks. And that finishes the opening. We cut out the rough opening a little larger than recommended by the window maker. And that's for two reasons. One is to make room for any further log settling. And two is to make room for the bucks, which go in next. We're using 2x8s for bucks. They provide the flat surface around the window frame for us to rest our windows against. Now we need these because we can't nail the windows directly against the logs. We'll put the first one in here on the bottom. We'll set it in right on top of this insulation. And once that's down, we'll nail it in place using these 6-inch nails. To make room for settling, we cut these side bucks three and a half inches short. We also sawed these slots for the nail. And that way, if the logs should settle, they'll be able to move freely without disturbing the bucks. We also put these washers on the nails so that they can move freely. The top buck then goes over the side bucks, leading two inches above for settling space. Now, some log builders will perform this part of the job for you, but they may require you to mark the walls and have all the bucks ready to go in. Well, once the bucks are up, we can go ahead and install the windows. Now, we're using a variety of double-hung casement and awning windows in single and multi-units. We chose this rustic-looking divided lifestyle that was real common in older construction, and this is a triple-wide double-hung unit here. To cut down on heat loss, the panes are double-glazed so that two layers of glass with a quarter inch airspace in between. And we specified a green factory finish and this slab four inch casing to enhance the rustic feeling. Now we did have to do some prep work out here. We notched some of the logs so that the casing will fit flush with our bucks. We also cut a three quarter inch groove into the upper log with a chainsaw. That's for the top of the window trim. We saw it in deep enough to leave plenty of space above so the wall won't crush the window as it settles. We're using masonry clips to secure the windows, so we won't have to nail to the finished trim. With help from Dean Doyne, we then set it in place and slide the trim up into the groove. We want the unit level, okay. so we raise it up and shim underneath when the bubble lines up. That's good then? Yeah. All right. Hold her in. Yeah, I got it and we nail the clips into the box. The upper trim ends up nestled in the groove we cut, creating a smooth finish with the top log. We cut that last opening, secured the box, and installed the window all at once. But you could cut out all the openings first and install the windows later. Just be sure that you put in the box as soon as you cut each opening to maintain proper support. We've got two other window styles that we'd like to show you. Well, for instance, our plans call for a couple of these awning windows. And this one is going to be mounted in this shed dormer right here. 
and that'll provide a little light for the second floor bathroom. And we're also using several of these casement windows. These have the same double glazed divided light features as our double hunks. So we've got a real mix of windows here, but it'll provide a lot of light. As the exterior is getting closed up, there are a few projects going on here on the inside. Our electrician, Dan Perrin, is starting to run the first electrical circuits and boxes. Now, because the logs are solid, this is a little bit more of a difficult project than if we were working on a conventionally framed home with stud walls. Well, for instance, in some areas of the house, like we're doing here, we actually drill up through the floor, through the logs, and then route out an opening here for each electrical box. After planing the log surface flat for a box, he drills two holes with an inch and a half bit. That roughs in the opening. Then he finishes it by squaring the corners off with a wood chisel. Down the basement, he drills up with a long half inch bit. That's after measuring to make sure his vertical channel hits the opening he cut. Then he fishes wire up the channel. The wire will later be hooked up to the service panel. It comes up through the opening and gets threaded through the electrical box. Then we screw the box into the log. The outlet goes in later. The majority of the wiring will come up between two by four partitions that will build along these metal posts here. And that's how we'll supply power to the second floor. Now another way to do this is to route out channels in the log ends here along windows and doorways. Of course, it's nice to do this before the bucks are installed. While we've been working on the roof and the windows, our masons, Tim Tusick and Mike Jameson, have been working on the fieldstone fireplace. We cut away the logs here for the firebox and the chimney. Now, they're building up the concrete block interior for the fireplace and the fieldstone exterior as they move up the log wall. This is the same crew that did such a great job on our fieldstone foundation. And again, they're using rocks that have been picked right from the property here. Now, because the weather is so cool, the mortar is slow to dry, so things aren't going as quickly as they could. But they're doing their best to keep the materials warm. Other than that, Tim, how's it going? Pretty good, Jojo, but we could use some more rocks. Already? We're using them up. Okay, well, I'll tell Dean. Thank you. <sighs> What's interesting about this property is it has this old railroad spur running right up the middle of the property. It's made up of thousands of field stones that were carried up from the lake by laborers oh, about 100 years or so ago. You can see them kind of laying out along here. In fact, what's kind of ironic, now we're carrying them back down to the lake using the fireplace. Yeah, ironic. <laughs> Our first snow fell a couple of days later, but by then the roof had been fully enclosed and all the windows had been installed. So we were still one step ahead of the weather. I finished the roof later with concrete tiles, so the last step at this point is nailing down fascia boards to the rafter ends and securing a drip edge. Okay, we can start installing the French doors here on the back porch. Now we cut out the opening and installed the bucks the same as we did with the windows. We took the doors off their jams because they're a little bit heavy. And these have the same double glazed divided light features that our windows do. Now, we weren't able to go with a factory paint finish, nor were we able to go with a 1x4 trim. So we took the frame the way it was, we removed the brick mold and put on the 1x4 trim. Then we took a 3 quarter inch shim and placed that between our bucks here. This will raise the door a little bit off the ground. And we flash that with galvanized flashing that runs down behind this deck board and underneath the deck. This way we don't have to worry at all about moisture getting in underneath the door. Now, the next thing I want to do is put down a couple beads of caulk. One right here. And one right here. Now we've already notched the log so that this trim will fit flush. And now that it's caulked, we set the door frame in place. Make sure that it's centered. Get on the other side and take a look. Okay, let's see. Up on your end down there just a little bit. And now we want to make sure that the door is level here. Okay, right there, that's good. Then we want to check this first side here for plumbing. I'll do that using this longer level. All right. All right, that looks good. Okay. Let's go ahead and nail it. Now I'm nailing right through the trim here and into the buck. And 
and that's going to hold the jam in place. We're not using masonry clips here since the trim isn't painted yet, and we'll be able to hide the marks. From this point on, the door installation is pretty much the same as in any other construction. 